Hey guys, welcome to today's video. We're doing a do's and don'ts specifically on eyeshadow. So if you have ever wanted to know how to up your blending game, how to make things look even smoother, richer, more long lasting, then I'm gonna show you every single trick that I know in action. I'm also gonna show you all of the things that I wouldn't do and why I wouldn't do them in action. So we're gonna do one side of my face bad, one side good, and do the whole do's and don'ts that I did once before. You guys enjoyed it. So here we are again. And if you you like this one let me know what you want me to do next as far as lashes liquid lips blushes bronzer all of that good stuff I'm happy to break it down and spill all of my makeup secrets so that we can all look fabulous because <laughs> everybody likes some good makeup and this is stuff that will apply whether you do natural makeup or if you want to kick it up a notch you can use all of these techniques as well so I know you're excited hit the thumbs up button if you enjoy this and let's hop right in do you see what I see? An eyeshadow makeup brush in my hair yet again. But it fits the theme of this video. So we are going to get started. I'm gonna do all of the wonderful eye makeup tricks on this eye, the bad ones over here. Let's get started. So the first thing you wanna do is prime your eyes. You can either use foundation or concealer and then make sure that you set it with a little dusting of powder so that nothing creases. But for today, I'm going to go the extra mile and use a traditional eyeshadow primer. The eyeshadow primer that I have really been into recently is from Cinema Secrets and I actually just take a little bit on my finger. I always have a palette in front of me too, so I always kind of make sure everything's smoothed on my finger. You don't need to use a ton of product when putting on an eyeshadow primer. I'm just going to pat this all over the lid. This will prevent shadow from creasing. It will help everything glide on a little bit better, be a little bit brighter. So going the extra step of doing either a prep on the eye with concealer and powder or a primer is a great idea because on this eye you will see things will be more dull. They are not going to blend as well. They are going to crease and wear off more immediately than this eye, which will be looking fabulous all day long. Yay. Just for kicks, I thought I would give you a few other options of primers for the eye area that I enjoy. I really like the Urban Decay Anti-Aging. I also really love the Photo Focus from Wet n Wild, which is a very affordable $4.99. You may also notice that I don't have any other makeup on my face. Now, I used to very much stick to the rule of doing my eye makeup first and then foundation and everything else next. I now feel like I have great control and I know what I'm doing with my eyeshadow enough that I will usually do my face makeup first just because it's easier for me. But if you're doing a smoky eye or you are more of a beginner with makeup, it is a great idea to do your eye makeup first because you might experience fall out, you might blend too far over here. It is so much easier to be able to take a makeup wipe and clean everything up that you might have totally screwed up on and then you'll end up looking like an absolute expert than if you have your concealer on and everything's set on your face. It's near impossible to go in and use something wet to clean things up. So I would say if you are a beginner or if you are doing a major smoky eye, lots of glitter, lots of pigment, make sure you are doing your eyes first, foundation, everything else second. The first thing I'm gonna do is take a fluffy brush and this is just a setting powder. There's not a lot of pigment in here and I'm going to dust this on my lid and I can be pretty generous with it because you know, underneath here doesn't really matter. And this way I'm going to get a perfect amount of blendability and glide when I go in with color. And it may look like this is a lot lighter, like it's an actual pigment, but really it'll settle down. There's not much going on in here. It's just the CoverGirl, what is this one called? Advanced Radiance Powder. I love this one. So this eye is ready for shadow and this eye is just kind of like, whatever. We're gonna see what happens with the whatever eye. A term you may have heard of on YouTube if you have ever watched a makeup tutorial at all is the famous transition shade. And some people are always like, what is a transition shade? Why do I need that? It barely shows up. Is going to allow darker colors to blend into it. So you're not just going on a blank canvas, which can look horrible. So a good transition shade for me in here is gonna be this shade up in the corner. This is like my old school Viseart palette. This is a nice peachy shade, and I'm just going to dust this right kind of in and above my crease because I know I'm gonna be putting a darker shade 
into the crease itself. And this is gonna help things to have almost an ombre effect and just kind of blend out and look really gradient and blown out and not harsh and patchy, which is what we don't want. Also, I am using a MAC 224, and this is a brush I have had forever. This was the first makeup brush that I bought at a department store. I like saved up all my babysitting money, and I love this brush so much. It's an excellent brush if you are new to makeup. It's not too big, it's not too small. It's the right shape and size and very tapered and fluffy and really great for getting into the crease. You don't wanna go into the crease with something that is too um, tightly packed, you know, this is much smaller, but you wouldn't want to go into the crease and create essentially a line. So that would be a huge no-no. You wanna create something that's very blurred out. So when you think of the word eyeshadow, you are actually creating shadows. So get in the mood where you feel like you're an artist, you're painting, you're creating shadows, you are adding definition and depth, and that's how you're gonna look at the space on your eyes. You don't want things to look flat, you want them to look very dimensional. And that's why we're starting with the transition shade. Another trick I love doing is actually taking bronzer and using that as a transition shade. It works beautifully. Don't ever feel limited to using just eyeshadow as eyeshadow. I use all different types of powders on my eyes all the time. So I'm just gonna now throw that a little bit on top of the other color. And it looks so pretty, oh my God. Boom. Let's see what happens if I just go into kind of a medium toned dark shade right here and I grab product and I'm gonna go straight into the crease. Now the other thing that you wanna be doing, and I am in the habit of doing this even with my lighter shades, is I always kick off some of the excess, like I will do a little quick tap, so that there's not too much product flying around everywhere. It's not even a matter of fallout, it's a matter of there just being too much product on the brush, blending up and out in a weird way, creating patchiness. You wanna make sure that you are building color and not just going straight in with a thick coat. Think of it like if you were painting your nails, you wouldn't dip the brush in and get like tons of product on that nail brush and then go in with like a gloppy big coat. The best way to get a pretty manicure is thin coats and then you let it dry and you do another thin coat. Think of that with your eyeshadow too. It's gonna look better that way and you're gonna be able to use more colors and create more depth if you're using thin layers. All right, so I'm gonna go back in and not tap the excess off and show you what I mean. Oh, it's gonna look so good. Okay, so going in, now mind you, this is the same brush and this is just not looking good. I've got some serious fallout over here. The color is extending too much. And even though I'm trying my hardest to blend, it's just not looking good. So that is why you need a transition shade. I'm gonna take that same shade and just dab it. Look what I'm gonna do. Boop, like that. And I am going to tap off that excess and I'm going to hold my brush at the very end. This is where you are going to get your lightest amount of pressure. You don't wanna be blending things out, holding up at the base of the brush head because you'll have too much pressure. You want like light, magical strokes. You wanna like blend that makeup out where it just looks so pretty and nothing harsh or jagged. And also another thing that I don't think is talked about enough is brush placement. So I don't ever like go up like this. I don't go down like this. You wanna kind of go straight in and up a little bit to kind of think about where you're placing that color. I'm trying to get it right in the crease and slightly above. I don't want a ton of color on my lid itself. So I'm going to start on the outer edge where I want the majority of my color. And I am just gonna work this through the crease, back and forth, windshield wiper motions. If you wanna create more depth in that inner corner, you can, and you can kind of create it a little bit by pulling really through and rounded in the crease, but think about the shape that you want. Normally for me, I feel like it's more flattering for me to have more color on the outer edge. So I tend to focus the intensity out here because I want my eyes to be more wide set because I feel like they are too close together. So I'm gonna take just a little bit more of that color, tap off the excess, and you just kind of repeat the process until you have built up the color to the intensity that you like. Do you see how easy that is? It's looking really nice and blown out, unlike this where we went in with entirely too much. 
I mean, for me, I could throw on mascara and be happy with how this looks and it did not take much time at all. That is just two shadows, one brush, boom. So I am going to go into this MAC shadow palette and I'm gonna take a sh more shimmery shade and I'm gonna take it on this Morphe M504 brush and I am going to swipe it all over the lid. Now that might look kind of pretty, but let me tell you, we can make it look so much better. So I'm swiping this on the lid. There are a few problems happening. One, we are not getting that compact, intense pigment that you probably want on the lid itself because the lid is where you can have fun and really play with intense, bold colors and saturation of color itself. We're not blowing out color on the lid. We're not trying to fluff it on and make it all like, you know, and smoked out. We're trying to make it really bold and show up. So you could just, you know, put this over the lid. There's nothing terribly wrong with it, but we can make it better. That's my point. I wanna make sure that none of these rules are making you feel like you're doing things wrong. There really is no right or wrong way with makeup. I'm just trying to guide you through steps to make it look like, you know, what you see on Instagram or how you see someone's crease look really good and you're like, gosh, how do I do that? And you know, I'm just sharing my do's and don'ts for what I like with my makeup. So this side is kind of just meh, like it's not really that exciting. You can make this better by using the right shape of a brush. So I'm going to take another MAC brush. This is a 242 and I am going to grab the color flat. Now, a lot of people for whatever reason have in their mind, like they wanna go into the palette like this and you're really only gonna get color on the tip of your brush. So think about how you're gonna be pressing the brush on your eye. So I'm grabbing on the flat side of the brush all the way to the base of that brush. You can see I have a ton of pigment on there and we are gonna go in on the other eye. I'm gonna start in the center of the lid because that's where I like the most intense color and I'm going to press that all over my lid. Now you can make things even more intense by taking your color again on that flat brush where the bristles are all tightly packed so it's giving you that good saturation of color and we're gonna go uh, next level and spray a little bit of a makeup setting spray. This is from Makeup Forever. It has glycerin in it. MAC Fix Plus would work. I like using setting sprays more than water. I just feel like the glycerin in it is helpful for things to glide. And I am just going to now show you the intensity it picks up so much. Look at that. Don't go above your crease because you don't want shimmer to get in all of this business that is actually creating a shadow and depth to the eye. And boom, there you go. Really, really pretty lid color. Now we can take this even further. I'm gonna go back into the Viseart palette and I'm going to grab this chocolate shade over here and I'm picking it up on the tip of my brush this time, taking a little bit of that excess off and I'm going to make sure that I'm getting the tip of the brush because that's where I picked up my pigment. I'm going to dot it on the outer edge. And the reason I'm doing that is I have more control to not get it up higher than the crease. And again, you can always go back, pick up a little bit more, repeat the process. I also always like to go back in with whatever brush I was using in the crease and kind of make sure that the colors are all meeting up and they are all friends and they are all working together. So go back in with that crease brush and you can kind of blend things together so everything is like a happy little family, okay? Now on this side, I'm going to go in with that same brush, but I'm gonna grab product on the side of the brush and I'm just gonna kind of really exaggerate that outer edge. Like I'm going smoky. And the problem with this is you think you're hitting the outer edge. You're like, oh, I'm building up some nice pigment, but then you open your eye and it's getting underneath here and it can just look too harsh. That quickly got out of control, and that was just me getting too much pigment on the side of the brush, especially with darker colors, a little bit goes a long way. Just grab on the tip if you have a tapered brush. These are all tapered brushes right here. They're just different sizes. Now on flat brushes, like what we used on our lid, I tend to prefer to grab on the side. That's just kind of a basic key of patting on the lid, fluffing in the crease. So the last thing I like to do is take a clean brush and make sure once again that there are no harsh edges. You can always do this if things are looking a little bit 
blotchy or things are unblended, take a clean brush and just kind of fluff things through. And again, make sure that everything's coming together and everyone's happy and seamless and that there are no weird, harsh, uneven pigmentation or lines. Okay, let's talk about the brow bone. Don't go in with like, a highlight that is colored thinking, ooh, minty, icy lilac. You know, that might look good for a really dramatic look, but if you're going for neutral daytime, just bad idea. So what you can do with the brow bone to lift the brow is to use a light color. It can be matte, it can be shimmer, but it's a trick that, you know, a lot of makeup artists will use. They'll go right underneath the arch of the brow and it just opens everything up. But if you use too much, like what I'm about to do, it will actually grab light and look really harsh and it can actually close off the eye quite a bit. So I like to be so super careful when I am doing this technique. One of my tricks is to take an angled brush and I will actually go straight in to whatever I'm gonna use. I'm gonna use this light shade right here from MAC and I'm grabbing it on the tip and then I'm going to go right underneath the arch of my brow. Now, normally I would do this after my brow makeup was completely on. So I would go back in once my face and everything was completely set and done. And then I would have the control to have just the littlest bit of a brightened area here. And that gives a very natural eye opening effect. You definitely can do the same thing with something a little bit more shimmery. I'll show you. You can see it's really pretty just very subtle and soft. And again, if you're concerned about anything meeting up with the other colors, just take your brush that doesn't have anything on it and kind of blend the colors together. And now it's time to hit up that lower lash line. This tends to be a common thing where people just wanna go in with that dark color. When you want a lot of color and you want that like blown out smoky kind of a vibe, it might be the first gut reaction to just go in and be like, oh yes, I'm doing this dark brown, but that is not what you want to do. You actually want a less is more approach. So I am going to show you what happens when you do that. We're going to go in with, you know, what we put in the transition um, area of the bad eye. You know, I haven't kicked off the excess and I'm just going to go and show you how intense we can make this. I'm also going to pull it all the way in and now I look like I have been punched in the face. This is a Morphe M212. I'm gonna grab that same shade, just get on the tip of the brush, and I'm going to pack this really tight to my lash line, almost like I am lining my eyes. And I'm not gonna pull it all the way in because I wanna keep this area a little bit brighter. That's just a preference thing. That's not really a do's or don't. And already that looks much cleaner, much more controlled. Now I'm gonna take the transition shade I used on this eye right here from the Viseart palette. I'm gonna grab on the tip of this brush. This is from Kevin Aquan. This is a small eyeshadow flat tip. I love this brush for blending out the lower lash line. It's a really good one. Um, fun fact, I bought this at my very first eye mats like six years ago. Okay, so I'm going to kind of hug this underneath my lashes and really blend. And don't just give it like a one, two blend, like really stay here for a minute. And I kind of go in sections where I'll like blend, 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 go to the middle part, blend, 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 go kind of towards the tear duct, blend, 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 and just kind of repeat until I see that it is all looking nice and smoky and not overly crazy punched in the face. I'm actually gonna take a highlighting powder from Makeup Forever that I plan on using on my face today has kind of a pinky tone, but it's still icy. And I'm going to put this on a Morphe E36. This is just a really perfect inner corner highlight brush. It's nice and petite. And again, I'm grabbing the product on the tip and I'm going to go right on that tear duct and not drag the color everywhere. A big mistake that you can do with highlight is just overdoing it all together. I mean, you definitely want the color to show up, but you don't need to go toward your nose, you wanna keep it focused right on that inner corner. And that's just gonna bring a lot of light to your eyes. And again, everything's working together to be nice and bright and open. Now, if you go a little bit too crazy and you get more up in here, it just, it creates the wrong kind of a highlight. If you go too much here, it will just look like a weird stripe of metallic when you turn your head and everything will look a little bit off. Yeah. 
Now, obviously on the good side, I can always take a nice little makeup wipe and I can clean up any mistakes that I might have and create a really great situation for my foundation and concealer. And also lower lash line, I will throw out there. It is total preference of whether you wanna do this before or after concealer. I usually do my lower lash line after my concealer and that's just what works for me, but you do you. If you like any of the rules that I say are don'ts and you like them, keep doing them. Makeup is personal and it's all in good fun. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and that it helps you out with your makeup routine a little bit. If you did enjoy it, please give it a thumbs up. I love you guys so much and I will see you all in my next video. Mwah.